In recent decades, millions of people have drifted away from Jesus and their Catholic faith. Sadly, many may never find their way back. I'm Tom Peterson, and I believe that God has called me to use my background in media to be a catalyst in the new evangelization. Our organization produces inspiring and creative evangelization messages that have helped lead hundreds of thousands of inactive Catholics, converts, agnostics, and atheists home to Jesus and His Holy Church. Join us as we travel across North America to bring you stories of heartbreak, redemption, and transformation as the Holy Spirit leads His people home. God has an extraordinary plan for each of our lives. He wants us to spend eternity in heaven with Him and bring as many people with us as possible. This is Catholics Come Home. Now, I welcome you to my home to hear their amazing stories. Welcome to Catholics Come Home. In this episode, we'll meet a man who was raised as a Southern Methodist and a Presbyterian in the Deep South. Due to family pressures, Catholicism was not an option for our guest. But upon marrying a Catholic and having children, his journey into the church began. Like everybody else in this series, today's guest came home to the church by responding to a call of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to meet David McCullough. David, welcome home to the Catholic faith and welcome to our home. Thanks so much, Tom. I'm, I'm blessed to be here. Yeah, we're, we're blessed to have you. Our viewers love to hear about people's childhood, how they grew up, where they grew up, their family dynamics, what faith they were raised in. So let's start way back then and hear about your young days. Well, I grew up here in Atlanta, huh? uh, on the east side of Atlanta, and uh, where Decatur and at Atlanta meet. I'm the youngest of four boys. Wow, my mother. God bless your mother. <laughs> yes, exactly right. Uh, grew up there and actually grew up uh, a Protestant, but surrounded by Catholic families. Mm -hmm. Our neighborhood um, had a number of Catholic families in it, but uh, was raised Protestant in the. What, what, what type of Protestant? Protestant faith? In the Southern Methodist Church. Ah, okay. My parents were very active in the Southern Methodist Church here in Atlanta. In fact, uh, started a, a church here with a few other families and wow. built, actually built a church in Marietta, wow. raised the funds to do that. So we, uh, we were raised, my mother was a very strong Christian, uh, beautiful, beautiful Christian woman. Good prayer uh, life. Very strong prayer life and uh, we were active in the church. Was your dad pretty active in faith too? He was active in the faith as well. He was um, in supportive of my mother and, and us right. and uh, always attended church service with us. I would say my mother was the one who was down in the weeds. She was teaching Sunday school. She was having, uh, holding Bible studies. And my dad was probably the, the support along the right. way on the finance committee, that type of sure. thing. Sure. What do you remember about any particular family devotions or things you did as a young Southern Methodist that you knew seeds were planted, where you really uh, developed a relationship with God in those young days because of something your mother taught you or you learned? Daily prayer was, was mm -hmm. important. We prayed uh, every day, every morning, every evening, every meal. We had held Bible studies in our home, wow. um, and that was really had an impact on me. We traveled, the, the church was, was the only Southern Methodist church in Atlanta, wow. and so we traveled 30 minutes in those days from the Atlanta area up to Marietta to go to church every Sunday at, with, without uh, hesitation. We were in the car all the and whole family. And that's without much traffic. Today it would take you an hour and a half to get there. Right, exactly. Well, I thank God that your parents instilled that prayer life in you. Would you say you had a strong personal relationship with Jesus as a child, as a young man? I would say in comparison maybe to other children that I hung out with, yeah. yes, but, but not overly. Right. Um, I knew who Christ was and I knew how important He was in my life at a young age. Good. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What happened next? Did you go off to college and how was your faith in those days? I did. I, I attended Auburn University, I went off for school, and I really was not active in my faith no. while at school. Now, when I came home, Tom, you're the first college student who's ever told me that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm sure I am. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, when I came home though uh, for breaks and yeah. weekends, I always at attended church. 
but at school you were hanging out with your friends, partying, doing exactly all the things right. that young doing college Doing the things I think do. young, young yeah. college folks do. Where did your uh, life and faith journey take you next? Well, when I got out of school, I came back to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I met a young lady, mm -hmm. um, and we started a relationship, dating. And uh, over time, it became very, very special. She was a devout Catholic. Oh. She was a, from a military family. Her father worked on base at Fort McPherson. Um, and she was a, the family was a devout cat, a Catholic family. Um, I would attend mass with her from time to time and she would come and, and attend service with me as well. Yeah. Did you have any desire to bring her into your faith background? Uh, did you guys have discussions about faith when you were dating? We did have discussions about it and, the, and it revolved around my questions about the Catholic faith because Tom, as I mentioned, my mom was a very strong religious Christian woman. She was raised in the deep south in the 30s and 40s. And as I mentioned earlier, we had Catholic neighbors and I played on the Immaculate Heart of Mary football team growing up. And, but there was some misconceptions my mom had about Catholicism right. being from the deep south. Sure. And I, what I knew about Catholicism was, well, they have statues, you yeah. know, at the Catholic church. And, you know, Mary seems to be the most, you know, uh, the most important part of the religion. And so I had these these questions right. and so those questions. Because of the because of erroneous teachings yeah, you were exactly getting from, right. from Protestants who didn't know That's the Catholic right. faith. And I, and, I, and I temper that by saying my mom just knew what she knew, right? And yeah. she was so open and loving and, uh, but, but I had some questions and so I was able to ask Paige about those yeah. questions and her parents and, and her priest about those questions. In the next segment, see how David's life will change forever. I said to the RCIA director, I'm in. I'm coming in. This is the church. There's a way of life where we learn that in giving, we receive. It's our refuge from chaos and light to guide us through darkness. It's a place where the broken receive healing and repentant hearts find mercy. So where is this hope and who knows the way? Our hope rests in Jesus and his church leads the way. So if you're longing to fill an emptiness, we invite you to experience the peace that only comes from God. We are Catholic. Welcome home. So David, you and Paige, who was going to become your wife, uh, were discussing Catholicism and you were intrigued with it because this was new to your ears. You hadn't heard these things before from a Southern Methodist background and in a Protestant area where you were being taught things that Catholics weren't doing and some erroneous stuff. What was it about the Catholic Church that piqued your interest and created those conversations between you and your girlfriend at the time and then eventually your wife? Um, it was the Catholic Mass. It was just the the sacrifice of the, the mass and and learning more about it and learning more about what each stage in the progression of the mass and knowing that no matter where I went in the world, where I traveled, that same mass is being uh, is being celebrated. It was a universal faith. It was faith. a universal yeah. faith that yeah. I had not experienced before. And it didn't change over time either. The same mass that Jesus had at the Last Supper and the apostles celebrated and the early church fathers celebrated and not much different in those 2,000 years. We're carrying on those traditions exactly of the early right. church that in the church Jesus started. Was the uh, reverence or piety, was the, um, the, were the sacraments in particular, like what, what stood out for you that differed from your background as a Southern Methodist? Well, I think the fact um, that, that the Eucharist yeah. is the body and blood of Christ. In my church growing up, we had, um, we partook in the Eucharist, but it was a quarterly, a symbolic, uh, symbolic bread and wine, bread and, or wine. bread and grape juice, but right, not right. truly Eucharist. Right, no. not truly Eucharist right. and not celebrated each week. Right. Um, and I just found that to be, a, to be beautiful and I wanted to know more. Yes. And we were married in the Catholic Church right. and I continued to uh, attend Mass with her. And as I did, I had the opportunity, my mother moved in town close to where my job was. So mm -hmm. I, would, I was able to go and visit her at lunch and have lunch with her, Tom. And what I didn't realize 
was over time, I'm talking about the Catholic Mass. And <laughs> to your mother. To my mom. I'm saying things like, hey, mom, you know, um, Mary and the Catholic Church, you know, Christ is the center of what Paige believes. At this point, I'm not a Catholic. Right. But when they pray to Mary, the Catholics are praying for the intercession of Mary. Right, we're praying with her. Praying with her. To bring those prayers to Jesus. Those prayers to Jesus. Right. And I said, Mom, who, who more would you like the intercession of than the mother of Christ herself? And it's in these, in these discussions that my mother began to say, oh, well, yeah, I, that, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, yeah that's it's, just it. Yeah. it. These revelations that I, they were revelations to me, sure. became revelations to her. And it really, I think, formed a, a tight bond with us. When you and your wife were planning your marriage, did mm -hmm. you kind of agree that you would check out the faith, but you never made a commitment that you would join and she was okay with that? Is that like she didn't want to pressure you? We went through uh, the pre camp, yeah, the pre -camp yeah. with a wonderful priest, Good. went to engagement encounter, Good. had a fantastic time. But the whole time we said, you know what, let's not worry about the the raising the children issue until that happens, because we don't know if we're going to be able to have children. Um, but I can tell you, I'm not against doing it in the Catholic Church. Being, okay. But maybe, but maybe we should cross that bridge when we come to it. Well, when we came to that bridge, Paige was adamant. We will raise our children. She had <laughs> been for called. Her. I think the <laughs> calling was, okay, we're, we're right. going to raise our kids sure. Catholic. And I, I remember Tom telling my mother that. She was pregnant, about to give birth. We had planned to baptize our child in the Catholic Church, and my mother, in a loving, Christian way, said, I'm concerned about that. Aww. And I said, Mom, why would you be concerned about that? And she said, I'm, I'm concerned for the soul of my unborn grandchild. Wow, so she still had she those She still had those. Now, those discussions at lunch mm -hmm. were early on. Yeah. We decided to go ahead, and she was there to celebrate the baptism mm -hmm. of our child. But over time, I'm now I'm regularly attending mass, I'm getting more involved, and I'm having those lunches with her. And it's getting deeper and deeper, my discussions. Was she understanding the theology you were presenting at those lunches? She, she was understanding, the, the I think, the theology me at the time as a non-Catholic can tell her. Yeah. She was understanding what I was saying to, to kind of let her know, hey, here's what goes on in the Catholic Church. Yeah. And was she agreeing to some of it and kind of reserved on other things because she just didn't understand it yet? I think she was reserved on some things she didn't understand, but for the most part, when I said, hey, um, uh, this is the teaching of the church and this is what you thought the teaching of the church right. might have been, she said, well, that is very interesting and enlightening to me. I did not know that. And okay. I'm learning more about gotcha. the faith because of these discussions. At what point, David, did you decide, I'm going to become Catholic? And I want our family to have a full Catholic family and you and your wife to present a, a common faith to your children. I hadn't thought about it to a great degree, Tom, until um, I had one of those lunches with my mother. And during that lunch, she looked across the table to me and she said, I believe, this is after our child was baptized, I believe that you should join the Catholic Church. Wow. What it was, place? it floored me. Wow. Never did I think I'd hear it. I asked her why, and she said, you have taught me so much just in your time at, in the church, going to mass, and she said, I believe that families should worship together, yes. and you, you, will, you need to join the Catholic Church because it's calling you. And God used you to catechize and reassure her that this wasn't a cult, anything strange or weird. She wasn't protesting. Mm -hmm. She just didn't understand the Catholic faith, but you lovingly and slowly and patiently exposed her to it so that she felt comfortable with her grandchildren becoming, you becoming Catholic and so forth. So praise God for that. What did you learn once you became Catholic that you didn't know when you were just attending mass with your girlfriend or wife, you know, before the kids? Well, I have to, I have to tell you that I didn't jump right into it. Mm -hmm. um, my mother, uh, after that conversation, about a month later, she passed away oh. unexpectedly, Wow, passed away. And that conversation really with her s sat with me and I prayed about it for about a year yeah. and at that point I went to the RCIA program at the church we were attending and had a wonderful RCIA host and just said I'm just here to learn more about the church sure. so to answer your question I dove into RCIA but not to join the church right away right. just to learn more and I learned so much Praise God. 
else that convinced, that convinced me. Yeah. And six weeks, four to six weeks in, Tom, I said to the RCIA director, I'm in. It's a no-brainer. I'm coming in. This well, is the church. What was beautiful church. is your mother gave you a blessing before she passed. Yeah. And you didn't feel guilty like I'm doing it behind her back. It, it was a blessing. So we thank God for that Holy Spirit touching her to give you that blessing. And I thank God for great RCIA classes. I know I've sponsored some people, and I say, it's amazing. You can go to Catholic school all your life, but you sponsor somebody in RCIA, and you learn even more about your faith. It's beautiful if it's done well and if the catechesis is strong. So I, I thank God for those people who serve in that way. Now that you're fully Catholic and in the mm -hmm. church, uh, what would you say are some of the epiphanies of faith you've had as a family together, as a fully Catholic family? I think the epiphanies of faith are that, um, that we are one community. Mm -hmm. um, we as a family and we as a church are one community and we're Christ's community. And we can lean on each other and yes. should lean on each other. We should be active. Mm -hmm. We should play an active role in worship. We should play an active role in helping others. Yes. Um, and that has been a real epiphany for us, taking the family and getting them involved in ways that maybe I don't think we would, Tom, right. if we weren't an active uh, practicing Catholic. You know, one of the things people who don't attend church regularly and don't have that Catholic community don't understand when you need prayers, when someone's sick in your family, when somebody gets into an accident, when you know you have a baby and you need some meals, God bless that Catholic community for being there to support you and then you then in turn can pay it forward and support them when they need somebody. That's what God intended. That's what community is all about. That's what Eucharist is, the Thanksgiving celebration of the family. Uh, it's, it's wonderful and we take it for granted until we realize that you know, with COVID lockdowns and everything else, we miss that sense of community, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely, and, and it's, it's easy to take it for granted. And I think Paige and I try every day to instill in our children, don't take it for granted. Do not take, it can be gone just like that. Um, and don't take this community that we have for granted. Soon, you will learn how David's faith is yielding much good fruit I'm drawn to the Eucharist. Uh, the Eucharist calls me home. Yes. And it's such a beautiful thing that I hadn't experienced before. It is here where you'll find the best marriage counselor, greatest healer, wisest teacher, and closest friend. I need your grace. I need your favor. David, we thank God that you and your whole family are practicing Catholics. You're in a strong faith community. I know recently, or not so recently, you're, when your kids were getting older, you changed parishes because one had a very strong life teen program and it really helped the kids get engaged. How did that bless your family by doing that? That move was a hard one, a difficult yeah. one, Tom, because I was in the church that I came in the church, became a Catholic uh -huh. in 2003, and I didn't want to leave. I had roots there. I became Grand Knight of, oh, the, of, the, of the council at the church, and I, um, I didn't want to go. My, our oldest son was being called to a different parish for the Life Teen program. I went to the pastor of the church we were in, and I said to, to him, I, my son wants to go, his younger brother wants to go, he's right behind him and knows this program. I, I don't want to go, Monsignor, and he looked at me and said, you have to go. Good for him. They're being called. Yes. And so we went and it was, it was sad to go, but it was such an enriching program. It gave us, Tom, it gave Paige and I something that we couldn't give them. Right. Um, the church and the program and the fellowship and, uh, is, is, was just fantastic and enriched the entire family. David, you made the sacrifice to give up your friends and your sense of identity as the Grand Knight, and all, but to sacrifice for the, for the teens, your, your sons, so that they could have community and they could stay engaged with the church. And that's so important these days because I think the statistics show by age 23, like 80% of our young people drift away from the Catholic faith. 
So you help to plant those seeds deeper by making a small sacrifice. And now you have two church homes. You can come to mm -hmm. events at your first parish and, and be active in your second. And that's the beautiful thing about being a Roman Catholic. We can roam around and uh, go to a couple different churches. Uh, we're, as we near the end of our time together for this, uh, this interview and this testimony to God on how great he is for uh, instilling faith in all of us and never leaving us, what things, when you look back at your days as a child, do you now know that you didn't know then? Or perhaps even more, when you were in college and you drifted away from God and didn't make him the center of your life, what do you know now about God and the way he uh, loves us that you didn't know back in college? The, the biggest thing I know, Tom, is that God, Christ was with me that whole time. When I walked away, he was with me. When I came back, he was with me. When he called me home to the church, yes. he was with me. When he called me to another church, he, he's been with me the whole time. And I think as a youngster, I knew about Christ. I had been given a solid foundation in Christ, but my walk was sometimes astray. Right. You knew about him, but now you know him. Now I know him yes. in a way that I never knew him before, thanks. And did that come because of the Eucharist, the sacraments of the Catholic faith? I think it did. Yeah. I think it did. I'm drawn to the Eucharist. Uh, the Eucharist calls me home. Yes. And it's such a beautiful thing that I hadn't experienced before. Your first time in the Adoration Chapel, your first time saying a rosary as a former Protestant, what was that like? Uh, nervous, I'll tell you. I was, I, I was a little bit nervous. Am I gonna get, in regards to the rosary, will I get it right? <laughs> Do I understand each decade? Do I understand what, why I'm praying? It was the, the community that supported me and specifically the guys in the Knights of Columbus. Yeah. We, we pray a rosary They give you a little cheat sheet, they but God me. bless your humble heart for caring. Right, right, exactly right. Um, so it was, and adoration was just beautiful. Yeah, the yes. very first time to experience Christ in that way, uh, such, a, such a gift. When I had sponsored some uh, people in RCIA, and I remember the class's testimonial, so many, you know, big, tough engineers and guys, you know, football type quarterbacks would say, I went into that adoration chapel for the first time. You knew God was there. There was so much peace, and they start crying. It's like, it's true. I would encourage everybody watching, if you're not a Catholic, uh, to go to an adoration chapel, a uh, uh, Blessed Sacrament Chapel at a Catholic church, go in quietly, sit down. You will know God is truly present in the Eucharist there. No question. You will know. As we end our program, uh, I'd like you to share any last thoughts you have, um, how God has uh, done something particularly uh, interesting in your life. What do you want to share with our audience as a final statement? Well, I've been so encouraged um, by my faith and I, I would encourage the listeners to listen to God's call. He is calling you. You may not recognize it now, but as you look back and, and as we've talked about today, uh, you can see where God has called you and I would encourage that and continue to focus on the sacraments and focus uh, your family. I mean, as a vocation, yes. our vocation is to get our family members to heaven. Yep, exactly. Don't forget that. That's your daily routine. Great reminder. David, welcome home. Thank you, Tom. We've been talking a lot about transformational habits for our spiritual lives. There is a lot of good research out there on how to form good habits, but there is often something missing in these secular techniques. Any and all of these spiritual habits we've talked about through this season really do have transformative power. But you can't do this on your own. I think this is where the secular perspective on habit training can fall short of its potential. You may know the story of St. Augustine and his agonizing battle with conversion. In Book 8 of his Confessions, he has an imaginary dialogue with his bad habits. It's established that this particular habit was too strong for him until he has a discussion with Lady Continence. Lady Continence says to Augustine, can you not do what these men and women do? Referring to other converts he has heard about and has been stirred by. Do you think they found the strength to do it in themselves and not in God? 
Lady Continence is trying to show St. Augustine they didn't get continence or really any other spiritual habit of their own ability. God gave it to them. Why do you try to stand in your own strength and fail, she says to him. He will be the one to cure you and your ills. That's it. That's the secret to a spiritual life truly radically transformed. God's grace. St. Augustine was then disposed to hear the message of grace and conversion. Throwing himself on the ground, he weeps, asking God to make an end to the inner battles he faces. And in his weakness, God now can make him strong. Grace and scripture, as it enters into his story next, will help St. Augustine change his habits. And God's grace can help transform your habits and your spiritual life too. Here's your opportunity to grow in faith and help Jesus save souls. Visit our catholicscomehome.org website and click on the shop tab. Here, you can discover our four brand new popular books to help you and those you love grow closer to Christ. The Willpower Advantage, Building Habits for Lasting Happiness, includes a personal spiritual audit and a customized plan to help you fight lifelong vices and find freedom in Christ. One Moment Can Change a Soul helps you guide family and friends home to the Catholic faith. Plus, two beautifully illustrated children's books to help your children or grandchildren stay close to Jesus. Epic, the story of Jesus' Holy Catholic Church and Santa's Priority, Keeping Christ in Christmas. You can also order a car magnet to evangelize in traffic, evangelization cards, and DVDs with all of our best episodes of our international television series. If you have a question or want to tell us how Catholics Come Home has blessed someone you know, or you can financially help us blitz the secular airwaves with these powerful evangelicals, contact us at info at catholicscomehome.org or by mail. Catholics Come Home, P.O. Box 1802, Roswell, Georgia 30077. Please help Jesus save more souls. During his adolescence, David followed his family's faith. But thanks to God's grace and a supportive wife, David and his whole family opened their hearts to Catholicism and now have deep Catholic faith. Since coming into the church, David has served in leadership roles in the Knights of Columbus and other Catholic organizations. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Catholics Come Home. Please keep David and the McCullough family and all of us at Catholics Come Home in your prayers. Remember to fulfill your role in the new evangelization and help love somebody to heaven. Mm -hmm.